Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. If you are new here, hello, my name is Allie. This video is very different from my normal content. I normally make a lot of vlogs and mom content, but today's video is going to be about all of the books that I read in January. These are all actually just random prop books because I read on my phone, but I wanna look like all the other cute booktube videos. But yeah, this year I have gotten back into reading again. I used to love reading and somehow when I became a mom, when life just got really busy and chaotic, somehow I just stopped reading. I kept seeing all of the book talk, book recommendations and booktube videos, and I joined a book club with some of my friends this year. So I have gotten totally back into reading and I've been having such a fun time with it. I read 10 books in January. So I want to just talk a little bit about each of them, tell you my rating on them. This book I actually read at the very, very end of December. So this is my like 11th book, but I still wanna talk about it because it is kind of like the book that got me back into reading and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which I'm sure every single one of you has heard of. Everybody is obsessed with this book and for good reason. It is a really, really good book. This book is about Evelyn Hugo, who is a Hollywood icon. She is like a classic 50s Hollywood superstar, basically. The way the book is written is that she is telling her life story to a writer who is going to write her autobiography. She has never done anything like this. She's always been very private, doesn't do interviews, doesn't like tell much of her story to anyone. The details of her life story are a little bit of a mystery and the writer doesn't exactly know why she chose her to write her book. And so that is kind of like a looming question. The whole story is like, why did she pick me to tell her story? She starts at the very beginning and goes through her entire life story basically in chapters of her seven husbands. It's first all just so interesting hearing her entire life story and how she gets where she does why she has so many husbands and the whole time you're kind of trying to figure out who like the real love of her life was and that is like the biggest question that everybody has about her is who her like one true actual love was because she did have so many husbands it's a beautiful story it is so creatively written it keeps you so interested it's so hard to put down i love when a story ends so perfectly and everything kind of comes together and you're not left with like a ton of questions. It all just kind of wraps itself up into a perfect little bow at the end. And this book did that for me, but I love this one so much. It was so great. I give it a five out of five. The next book I read was November nine by Colleen Hoover. This was my first ever Colleen Hoover book, which a lot of you guys say that this is not like one of her best ones, but I thought that it was really, really good. This was at the book club book that I read for it this month. So I didn't choose it. It was just like a random one, but I loved it. And something I have learned about Colleen Hoover books is that you literally cannot put them down. These are the books that I read so freaking fast. Like I read them in one day, basically. They just hook you in and you cannot put them down. You have to know what happens. She is an amazing author. Basically it follows Ben and Fallon. They meet very randomly at a diner on November 9th and they just are instantly so so drawn to each other. Something about them, they just can't get enough of each other. They are like obsessed with each other immediately, but she is actually moving away the very next day. So they spend the entire day together and they somehow make a plan to see each other once a year, every year on that same date. So on November 9th for the next five years, they meet up on that same day. The story is all about how they basically build a relationship only seeing each other one day a year for five years. They have no other way of contacting each other the rest of the year. They can't see each other on social media. They don't have each other's phone numbers, nothing. They just make a plan and they meet on that day every year. But as always with Colleen Hoover, there are twists, there are turns, there are unexpected things that happen. I thought it was a really great book. It kept me so hooked from start to finish. I really enjoyed it. I didn't like the ending, but I don't wanna give any sort of spoilers or anything. I'd probably give it like a three or four out of five stars, three and a half out of five. I'll give it that. Next, I moved on to this book, Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. This book was hard to read for a lot of different reasons. This one was like a thriller mystery type of book. I don't wanna say too much about it because I don't wanna like give too much away in case you do wanna read it. It was a good story. It was a thriller. It was interesting. It kept you hooked, but it was gory. It was graphic. It was disturbing and it was also kind of boring. <laughs> so definitely not one of my favorite books that I read this month at all. The first like 150 pages, I just thought were so boring and kind of confusing. It was definitely kind of hard to like get used to the writing style and like the way that it was going from like person to person. And 
for a thriller, it was really boring for like the first half of the book. After like 150 pages, it did start to get really interesting, but also really <laughs> graphic and intense and it was kind of a lot if you're a person who likes true crime like criminal minds type of things you'd probably like this book but uh maybe look up trigger warnings before you read it i give this one like a two and a half out of five it definitely was my favorite after that i moved on to something a little lighter um and i read malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed the same author who wrote the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i absolutely loved this book i was devastated when it was over because i did not want it to end i loved these characters so much i absolutely love the way this book was written it was just a joy to read honestly i loved everything about it i do think that you should read the seven husbands of evelyn hugo before you read this one because there is a tiny bit of character crossover which i really actually enjoyed so one of evelyn hugo's seven husbands mick riva um this is a story about his family about his first wife and all of their children together and basically like what a horrible father he is and it's so hard to describe because i feel like so much went on in the story it was just wonderful i loved this book so much <laughs> this is one that i will definitely read again because it was just so good i get this one five stars easily absolutely loved it after reading malibu rising i could not get enough of taylor jenkins read so the next one i did was daisy jones and the six <laughs> this is another book that i feel like is so highly recommended people cannot stop talking about it everybody kept telling me i needed to read this book and i was so excited to read it i felt slightly let down by it i didn't think it was as amazing as everybody had made it out to be i felt like it was very very hyped up and then it didn't quite live up to the hype for me but i still really did love it it just wasn't like a, a five out of five this is amazing type of book for me it was written in such an interesting way which was kind of hard to get into in the beginning because you're having to get to know a lot of characters the whole story is written basically almost like documentary style from the perspective of like 10 12 people maybe more kind of hard to tell but you can kind of see like every there are so many different characters all giving their perspective on like what's going on and the whole entire book is written that way it's not written from one person's perspective which is hard to get into at first but once you do it's so interesting to read it just makes it really fascinating it's funny it was great i really did like it i probably give this one a four out of five after that one i moved on to another colleen hoover nobody would leave me alone about reading this book so i had to just read it and that is verity by colleen hoover this book took me on a ride it was a roller coaster there were twists there were turns so much unexpected stuff the ending the ending had me shook i was dming so many people on instagram after it was over like what did you think of the ending which way do you think it goes if you have read this one let me know in the comments if you are team letter or team manuscript because i can find ways for both i can like make myself go either way this book is kind of hard to explain it's basically about an author verity who has some sort of accident and she can no longer write books but she's in the middle of a like six book contract or something and she has a few books that still need to be written so her husband and her team basically like find an author to write the remaining books of her series for her and they pick this author lowen so she actually goes to verity's home and stays there for like a period of time so that she can go through all of the stuff in her office and try to like figure out how she can keep this book series going go through all of her notes go through everything read the books figure out how to keep it all going but while she's doing that she finds a hidden autobiography or biography whatever it is the one where she writes it herself she basically finds like a manuscript of her life story from her perspective and it's dark there were moments as a mom that it was really hard to read because it is just dark definitely look up trigger warnings for this one too before you read it because uh there's a lot that goes on that's all i'll say about this one but it was so good there's probably not many people left in the world who haven't read this book, but if you haven't, definitely read it. Read it and then come back and DM me on Instagram and let me know what you think of the ending. This one is a, a five out of five for me. After that, I read In Five Years by Rebecca Sterl. This one feels like the most forgettable book that I read this month. Honestly, I can't even remember the characters' names, so I have to go look. The story is about a girl named Danny who basically has a premonition of her future of a night in her life five years from now and what she sees in her future is completely different than what she was expecting and she 
doesn't want it. It's basically about her just trying to like fight that future and trying to not let that like come to fruition. This book was also very unexpectedly sad. I didn't know it was going to be so sad, but it was another one that at the end, everything just comes perfectly together into a neat little bow. Overall, I really liked it. It wasn't like the best book I've ever read. Like I said, it was a little bit forgettable, but I did think it was really great and I do recommend it still. I'll give this one like a 3.5 out of 5. After that, I read The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This was another one that I kept seeing recommended all the time and I was like so excited to read it. I thought this book was boring. I did not like it. I did not understand the hype of this book. This book was supposed to be like mystery thriller. It was supposed to be like a page turner, like a really exciting read. And I just did not get that from it at all. This book was just so hard to get through for me. The story definitely picked up about halfway through and got a little bit more exciting and made it a little easier to read. Even still, the story was just so far-fetched, so like unrealistic and like just not really even that interesting. Even when it was exciting, it was still boring you know what i mean this one is about a woman's husband who like goes missing unexpectedly and leaves her and his 16 year old daughter behind and basically them trying to like figure out where he went trying to like get him back but there's all sorts of like turns in there and there's like mafia involvement and it's just i just didn't think it was good like at all i gave this one a two out of five and that was a generous two honestly. The next one I read though really made up for how bad that one was because this book was so good. So good. And that is Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. I loved it. I loved it. This book is about Grace and Matt. They meet in college and they fall absolutely in love. Watching their love story unfold is just like beautiful, amazing. You feel so like attached to these characters. The way that she like writes their love story is amazing. And then they go their separate ways and you are devastated, heartbroken, trying to understand why. And basically they find their ways back to each other. There are so many like unexpected twists and turns and you just cannot put this book down. It was so good. This was an easy five out of five. I wish I could rate it even higher than that because it was just so good. This book really has it all. It's got the love, the romance, the heartbreak. This book made me cry at the end. I was in tears. Highly recommend. After that, I read Beach Read by Emily Henry, another one that I just loved. I loved this book. I feel like there are a lot of mixed opinions on this book. Like people either really love it or hate it. I'm always shocked when I hear negative reviews of this book because it was so good to me. I really, really liked this book. This book is like an enemies to lovers book, which <laughs> is like a dynamic that is really cute to read. The main character of this book, January, her dad passes away and leaves her a beach house in Michigan, basically. She's a writer, but she's in like a huge writing slump because of the loss of her dad and just a bunch of other things going on in her life. She's got like a big time writer's block. She's straight up not having a good time. She's super broke because she's not writing anything. So she moves into her dad's house that he leaves for her and realizes that the next door neighbor to this house is her biggest rival from college. He is another author and they just butt heads in college. They were always competing, basically just didn't really like each other. It was amazing. I thought it was really well done. I really loved it. It was definitely cheesy. It was cheesy, 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 but so good. And it literally had me laughing out loud multiple times throughout the book because the characters like banter and dynamic together just worked so well. I loved it. Five out of five. And then the very last book that I read in January was Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This is another book that was so highly recommended. It has almost a five star rating on Goodreads, which is like unheard of. <laughs> I was so excited when it came up early on my library card and I was so let down. <laughs> this book did not live up to the hype for me at all. It's such a bummer because this story was so good. It was just the writing for me that just made it so hard to get through. The story is about a girl who lives in like the marshy swamplands of North Carolina, I think. She's basically abandoned by her family. When she's like six years old, her mom and her siblings all leave her and she's just living alone in the shack with her dad who is not present, kind of abusive, not really raising her. He's like an alcoholic who's not there most of the time. And then when she's around like 10 years old, he never comes home either. And so from the time that she's just like a child, she is 
living alone in basically like these swamp lands in the shack alone by herself. All of the people in town, instead of like helping her, they just watch her from a distance. They call her Marsh Girl. Nobody helps her. So she's almost kind of fearful of people. She doesn't really know how to like create any relationships because she's just been alone for so long at such a like interval time of her life. It's like a coming of age story, how she learns to survive on her own and then how she does form relationships with people as she gets older. But it's also kind of a, a mystery whodunit book because a boy in the town is murdered. So everybody in the town just automatically blames her because she's been basically cast out by society. The whole time you're just trying to figure out like who did this, what happened, but also while following the story of how she just survives and grows up on her own basically. I didn't realize when I was reading this but they are coming out with a movie of it this year. I bet that the movie will be amazing because the story is so good but something about the way that this book was written it was so hard for me to read and it was so boring. I had such a hard time getting through it especially the first half of the book. I felt like there was so much unnecessary descriptive filler in this book. The writing style was just hard for me to read. It felt like a chore to read, honestly. Like I was never excited to like pick this book up and read it. <laughs> the motivation for me reading it was simply to get it over with so that I could get on to the next book because I hate leaving books unfinished. But like I said, this book is so highly rated. So don't let my review keep you from reading it because you might be one of the five star reviews. Some people really love the descriptive element and the writing element of it that just wasn't for me honestly but because the story was so good i will give it a three out of five yeah not my favorite i don't get the hype around it so that is all of the books that i read in january let me know what you guys think of videos like this if you are interested or not i would love to do it again at the end of february i will link my goodreads account in the description box along with the links for all of these books if you guys want to try any of them out but yeah don't forget to subscribe and follow me on instagram and i will see you guys all in my next video